Greetings, First Congregational United Church of Christ in Portland, Oregon. I'm Eric Elness, and uh, I am filming this message from the Sanctuary of Countryside Community Church in Omaha, Nebraska. But in the, just a couple short weeks, I'll be on my way to move to Portland and join you, and I am so deeply excited. And of course, I'll be entering um, the community of First Congregational during Advent. And I've been thinking about how can we take this high-tech worship we're doing with Zoom and all this and, and also introduce uh, more of a high-touch element. And well, you know, Advent is a great time for high touchability because you know that every year during Advent we light the Advent wreath. This is Countryside's kind of modernistic interpretation of an Advent wreath. But you know the Advent wreath doesn't have to stay in a church. We can have them at home. In fact, this year I'm suggesting and inviting you to go a little old school with me. Now, when I was a kid, we didn't do Advent wreaths, so those are perfectly great too, but we, we took a log out of the wood pile and we made Yule logs. A Yule log serves the purpose of an Advent wreath, except it's a log, like this. So this is my Yule log. Now, I have no skills as an arts and crafts person, like zero. I'm about as far away from crafty as you can get. And yet even I created this in about 20 minutes. It may not look like a lot, but it looks like something that reflects higher skill level than I actually have. Uh, but it's, it's, bottom line, it's really easy. And I invite you to make one, uh, an Advent uh, Yule log or, uh, or a wreath and that we light in worship together um, every Sunday. And I'm going to show you how I made it and the, the different components. But to start out with, it's uh, an Advent wreath or a Yule log typically has five candles. There are three purple ones, and there's this uh, pink one and the white one. Now, the purple and the, and the pink ones are lit every Sunday during Advent, one at a time. You light the purple first Sunday, purple second Sunday, and then you go to the pink one on the third Sunday, which represents the theme of joy, because every candle has a theme associated with it. And I love the fact that our tradition has singled out joy with a special color, just because, well, joy is joy, right? You gotta be a little loud and different. Um, and then the, uh, we light the fourth, uh, the pink, the purple candle on the fourth Sunday, and then Christmas Eve, we light the white candle standing for the, the which is the Christ candle. Now. The Yule log actually predates Christian tradition, actually goes back into pagan traditions around the, the, the winter solstice and the coming in the light in the world, and they would burn the whole log uh, on, on the solstice night. And I like to actually, um, I like the idea of honoring the solstice too. It kind of takes place so close to Christmas, and so um, I invite you to, on the solstice, which is D December 21st, to light the Christ candle for the first time representing the, the light that comes into the world and all of creation responding to it. And then we light on Christmas Eve the Christ candle for the second time, representing the light coming to the world and all of humanity responding to it. So now we have all of creation and all of humanity together represented in this log. And then if you've created it with, with natural ingredients, you may want to just burn it on, on Christmas Day in celebration. Now, my Yule log is not made of natural ingredients for two reasons. One is I'm filming this well ahead of Advent, and I want it to still be uh, useful to, uh, when Advent happens. But also, um, there, it's a little less flammable, and this can be saved, too, if you want. So do what, whatever you'd like. Use your creativity. But I'll, here are the basic components to making an Advent Yule log. First, you want to start out with a log, and I've got mine from Ace Hardware. <laughs> and, and you'll want to make sure that the bottom is stable, but then you'll want to take a drill and a three-quarter inch wood uh, bit to it, or just a regular drill bit. To just, uh, the key is to make sure it's the size of the candles you're going to use. I used a three-quarter inch one, and I drill the five holes, roughly you know, spaced apart fairly evenly. Now to complete this project, of course, you're gonna want more than the, the, the holes. And so that's where uh, you'll need some other equipment. I suggest a, a glue gun, a staple gun. You may wanna have tin snips and a, uh, an X-Acto knife. You know, really, it kinda of depends on what you wanna put on your wreath. But I, I bought these, these sprigs here and, and I, I disassembled the sprigs and, and that way I could just simply staple the sprigs around the candle holes. And then I had this 
this special little um, napkin holder that I thought would be fun to surround the Christ candle with. And then I used the glue gun for putting on the, the pine cones and voila, super easy. So I invite you to make your own Yule log or Advent wreath for this coming Advent. Or if you so desire, purchase one. And, but the point is, is let's, let's get a little high touch as, along with our high tech worship this year. And let's, do, uh, let's light the candles, the Advent candles together. Well, once again, I can't wait to see you. The first Sunday of Advent, Sheldon Hurst will be preaching. And then I'll start my own worship leadership on the second Sunday of Advent. One other thing just before I close is one of my goals for the, the first few months is to meet with every single one of you who would allow me to meet with you, either via Zoom or some sort of safe, socially distant uh, way. But I really would like to get to know each and every one of you and as soon as, as possible. And so uh, shortly you'll be, you'll be hearing uh, an announcement about how to sign up for uh, either Zoom sessions or again, socially distanced, personal meetings. But I would really love to spend an hour and just have conversation, learn about your life, learn about your hopes and dreams for the church, the world, uh, those kind of things. So let's get to know each other in the coming months. And once again, I can't wait to see you very soon.